So another Roger Rabbit piece. So it's a Nomad Sculpt, a uh, little project that I've been doing and it's all about Roger Rabbit, obviously. And this one is a little bit about the detailing. So if you followed the last two videos where we did the references, then the block out, now we're gonna do a bit of detailing, which means kind of getting him ready for his final uh, presentation of, of, of how he's gonna look and then also paint him. Okay, so uh, first of all, this is obviously time-lapse. So what you're looking at is a time-lapse. Now, I don't normally do that, but these last few videos, I, I've done so many videos with Nomad and there's so many people doing these videos that I don't believe we need many more um, uh, uh, of the really slow, detailed ones. And if you do think we need them, then drop it down in the comments below. And if there's a specific tool, then I'll keep doing those videos. But I'm quite enjoying doing this time-lapse, talking about my workflows rather than um, the individual Bit. So let's have a look at the screen where we're up to. So we've taken the model and we were at the point really where we, we really should have named everything. You know I don't name things if you follow me. I'm terrible at doing that. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm joining the parts up. So obviously the glove with the back of the glove, that would be one logical part. And I, and I didn't do that in the previous video, obviously. So basically looking for volume. So that means looking to see if everything's got the right shape, the right, you know, right here, the right sizes of each of the digits. And it's a little bit off that one. So I probably will do a bit more work on that later on. But uh, as you can see, it's worth bringing it all together and then voxel merging it together so it makes it into one meshed up um, uh, glove. Copied it across to the other side uh, later on so in fact I'm doing it there now and that's a simple thing to do so you just use the symmetry at the top of the screen and you just flip it across the world and then using the pivot so tap the pivot um, and then move the pivot point and then move it into place. Now those arms are still tubes so that's tubes with points so you can quite easily um, just keep manipulating the size. So I've not done, you know, I wasn't worried about them until this point. And then I voxel merged the body and the arms together. And that gives me the body, the arms and the neck. And I'm gonna leave the head separately all the way through right to the end, the head will stay separate simply because it's good to pose it and twist the head around a lot. So had a little bit of a play with the overall proportions. And then I use the split tool. So that's basically split the top half with the bottom half. And I've just flood filled the bottom half with red. So I've just taken a normal red color, taken down the, the roughness or improve, increase the roughness and, and then just flooded it in. And then what I'm doing is I'm pulling the, the lower one up over the top of, of the top one. And um, that makes it like a, you know, th these are a set of dungarees, but it's like the same with a dress or, or something like that. And then where the straps are gonna pull up, I just basically pulled those parts up and then I'll, I'll sculpt around those at, at a later stage in the video. So this is the interesting bit about this video. This is the tube tool in operation. Now we've changed the profile at the top and we've made it a, a, a nice rectangle, which gives me a strap. And then I move it in place point by point. So you notice I've only added two points at the moment, two points along the path. And then I slowly add a point and move it along the path. So this is one of the best tools in Nomad that's better than ZBrush. Trying to control the curves in ZBrush, it's very, very difficult. This, this is much more like something like Cinema 4D or, or Maya or something like that, where you get much more control over things along a spline. Uh, I don't believe that the ZBrush curve tool is a good tool at all for, you know, it, it, it's great for RT arty farty things where you want to you know do something but it's not as controlled as something along a spline like this and then basically just get it right get the volumes uh, um, sorry the, the the levels right so make sure it's it's sat on the body you can paint a mask on the body and extract it off but what this method gives me is really clean straps so i can't you know i, I, I can't fault it for that it's, it literally is one of my favorite tools in all of nomad sculpt um, so then I'm just changing the sizes. Notice at the end of them, I just, because if you tap um, the, the top, you've got the, uh, the, the radius, you just tap it three times and that means you can change the radius on each vertex along the, the, the tube or each point along the tube. And then again, same as the one on the, the, the other side, I've just lined up. I just copied that by the way, it was just using the same one, copying it across. Uh, and then just just adjusting it to, to suit. Um, you notice there, it looks a bit darker. So I've, I have actually put post-processing on and that's just because I wanted to see the shadows underneath the, the strap. So I'll probably turn that back off again because it's a bit 
grainy and a little bit a bit grungy while, while I'm working but it's really helpful to turn that on certainly ambient occlusion while you're while you're working now, I've turned it off again now so you can see I was, what I was saying uh, the buttons are just two cylinders so literally just take a cylinder va validate it crush it down spin it forward and stick it into the right place that's all you would need to do for those kind of buttons um, and notice that everything's got a black outline there that means outline is on I use that a lot and it helps me just to you know when I'm doing multiple objects the one that's got the outline is the one that I'm working on sometimes it gets a little bit confusing when you've got loads and loads of them so that's the the the, the bottom half sorted and now it's time for to, you know to have a quick look at the feet so I deleted one of the feet because I thought I'll just work on one again. Um, and then what, what I basically wanted to do then is voxel merge it, a voxel remesh it. So it gives it a, a, a different type of mesh and then just identify where I want the toes. So crease tool, just you know, grab it from the brush menu, uh, for you from the tool panel at the side, and then just you know basically scrape it into the surface as if you're if you're a ZBrush user, that would be damn standard. Um, and uh, you know, and the crease tool is quite a common thing in most programs these days. And then um, constantly remeshing when I want to, you know, make sure the mesh is good, and then smooth it down as well. So went to the paint tool, picked a nice paint, uh, a nice pink paint color that matches the style. Um, of the piece and then just basically painted it around. Now I noticed it was too jaggy there. So what I needed to do is increase the resolution so that the painting isn't as rough. This is called vertex painting or poly painting. Um, so you need a lot of geometry to be able to do it. So you see I've, I've increased the geometry and then the line gets cleaner. So instead of painting the pink now, I inverted it to the white and now the white is the thing that I'm lining along the edge of the pink. So that's a good little tip for you. Um, you can do this and then lower the resolution again back down with decimation um, if you want to. Uh, and also you can, you know, if you take this to the logical final step, you would be using a nice clean mesh anyway. Um, and you can project this onto that mesh. Um, so the feet are just, at the moment, they're just an elongated cylinder. You can see there in the background on the sketch. Um, so what I did then is just using the move tool, I just squeezed the back of the foot in, narrowed it down a little bit and just made it a little bit more um, like the, you know, the size that I wanted. So uh, duplicated it again. Um, so you can either just use flip it across with symmetry or you can just do a clone and then move it. Uh, and it's always good to move your pivot point to where it would be. So the back of the foot is what we'd go for there. Uh, the hair is the next thing, just had a quick mess with that to make sure that, the, that that's in the right sort of location. And then really what, what the, the next thing that's going to be needed to be to be done is, is to work with um, the overall parts of the head. So that means the eyes are going to have to go in the right place and, you know, and the, you, you, the ears would have to be in the right place. Um, I ended up doing the head completely uh, on its own right at the end. It'll be much further down in the videos. And all it's a case of doing is just using tools like um, Move and Clay Build Up or Clay. Um, clay Build Up is a ZBrush term. You can see me switching between programs as I'm talking to you. Um, and then um, just basically working with my reference get the volumes right you hear me say that a lot so make sure that everything that the cheeks are there's enough volume in them make sure the lips have enough volume um there i'm using the crease tool and i'm going to do a, a voxel remesh when it goes checkered like that that means i'm doing a voxel remesh to change the mesh a lot of people ask me when to do that when do i remesh so that's a good example it, you know when i've done a bit of creasing i'll remesh it uh, now you can see me changing this, this, the shape of the mouth, getting the curve of that right. Uh, and it changes a lot uh, all the time. What you really need to do in the block out is make sure you've got one of everything. Make sure that the cheeks are right, the nose is right. It doesn't have to be in the right place, but the right volume. So you're not trying to build something up that isn't there. So now you can see me blending in using clay and smooth between the jawline and the cheeks. Uh, you can see exactly on, on both sides. And bear in mind, this job isn't symmetry, symmetrical. So I didn't, I didn't do any symmetry on this character at all. It's all completely what we call in pose. So I'm just sculpting it as you see it um, in the, in the reference image. Um, then I'll just pop a nose on. I realised what I'd done is I'd welded the nose back in and lost it. So I just made a new nose, made it shiny, and then just basically put some shape in it at the bottom for the nostrils. Now it's a little bit more 
shaped than the actual Roger Rabbit reference, but I just quite liked it when I, when I did that, that, that little indent underneath. Now on to more painting. Um, and as you can see there, I've just literally gone with a nice high res mesh and just started to paint inside. One thing you must remember is with sculpting and painting, you might need to go in and put on front vertex, front facing vertex only. Um, that's a good tip um, because sometimes you'll paint through. You can see there I, I hadn't, so I had to clean that up. Sometimes it, it's a mess and sometimes it isn't. But if you turn that on, you'll only affect polygons that are at the front, whether that be sculpting or painting. So that, that's, that is quite a useful tip. Um, there's a tongue, so pretty much just a sphere with a, with a, a score down the middle, so a, 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 a crease down the middle, and then just pull it into place, change the texture, ch sorry, change the material. So that should be nice and shiny. Make it a little bit bumpy. I'll put a lot of texture on this later on to make it much more like a, you know, the, the final tongue. But for for this stage, uh, absolutely fine. So just make it, pull it into a tongue shape. So fatter at the back, thinner at the front, and and usually arced forward. And that just sits in nicely. So absolutely one of the easiest models you can make a, a tongue. And don't try and get complex with all these things. Just, you know, if you know that you want to make a shape, then just make a shape. So the tooth, for example, it's just a cube that's flattened. And then you just knock off the edges and that's it. You, you know, with these cartoony characters, certainly in these early stages, you, you don't need to go too complex and make, make everything difficult. So this video overall is an hour. So when by the time this one ends, it's an hour's worth of video down to about 15 minutes. So we've compressed it nicely down into a, you know, a, a nice 15 minute segment. So it's, it's um, you know, four times the speed that I work at. So I've taken each eye, copied it, and then I've cut out the, the, the new piece and that gives me an eyelid. So it's like basically taking an eggshell and just using the top of the eggshell. And later on, I'll blend that back into the body. But it gives me a little bit of an eyelid. Um, the eyebrow is above this, which we can sculpt on. But for the eyelid, it's good to have something like this. So it does take a minute just to get it into the right sort of position. Um, as you can see there, I'm just pulling it down, looking at the reference. It has to sit nicely on the surface. So, you know, this this will change a little bit as once I've welded it into the or voxel merged it into the body. Um, and that's it, I've changed the material on the eyes a little bit more because they are bluish on the original um, um, sketch of Roger Rabbit, but I've made them a little bit too dark. So um, I, I changed it a little bit there. Um, and then a little bit of tweaking on the hair. Uh, that, that hair, you know, it's very blocky and, and I won't get that finished until, until I, until I do the final part of the model. You'll see me do that in, in the very later stages of this model. Uh, now, for the eyes for this one, I just wanted a very quick slapdash paint on the eyes. So I looked for an alpha that was a circle. Didn't have one that was a complete circle handy and I couldn't be bothered making one. So I just used one that was a, mostly a circle. And then basically what you do is you go to paint and then you make it so that you can drag it on the surface. Um, and then once you, well, that's from the stroke menu. And once you drag it on the surface, drag it a couple of times to make it a little bit uneven, change the color to black and drag the black on as well. Now, there is specular, there is a reflection in the eyes, but I've put fake specular highlights in. Sometimes for cartoons, it's good to stick an extra uh, little white dot of color on there. Um, and then back to once we've got the basics of them in, then it's back to shape and back to, you know, making sure that everything's looking as, and we haven't got turnarounds for this. They're where you see images of the of the reference from all different angles. So we've only got the sketch that I did from the front. Um, so a lot of this is made up. So there will be inaccuracies if, you know, if, if anyone's a, a Roger Rabbit, um, you know, perfectionist, um, you know, with no reference from the back or from the side, then it's it, it would be a little bit of a guess. But obviously for a fan piece like this, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm just tweaking the eyes again. The eyes are the windows to the soul, as you know, um, and, and obviously getting the eyes right on any ca character is, you know, one of the things that really defines a character. So if you get the eyes wrong, it probably won't look good. Um, so spend a bit of extra time on, on those eyes. Um, again, looking at the reference, looking at the shape, making sure everything's in the right sort of place. Um, and we're cruising down to the end of this video now. So we, you know, we, we, we're just looking for, you know, little tweaks really. We're looking for the final little bits of detail for a character like this. And notice it's not lit at all. We haven't got any lighting in there. There's nothing that, that's really 
uh, making it, you know, you know, pop. Um, you know, no backlighting. We're going to do all that later. So this is just about the basics of of the detailing. We haven't even put the finer details in there yet. We're just looking at, you know, the the the, the absolute um, basics of getting the form right. I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are please give us a thumbs up it does make us want to carry on making them and if you like it enough to give it a thumbs up then drop us a subscribe down below and you can see when we upload new content we're starting to do a lot of nomad again and i'm going to be doing in the next few weeks some vr stuff so i'm going to talk about subdivision modeling in vr over the coming weeks